Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from the lands of the Gadigal people. This is ABC News Daily. Since the weekend, Ukrainian forces have recaptured significant territory from Russia in a lightning speed advance. So could Ukraine be winning the war? Today, retired US Army Major and urban warfare expert John Spencer on the remarkable comeback and how Ukrainian troops pulled it off. I'm John Spencer. I'm the chair of Urban Warfare Studies at the Madison Policy Forum. John Spencer, it felt like for a a while we stopped watching what was going on in the war in Ukraine. You know, other things were distracting us this week. Of course, it was the death of the Queen. But if we did turn away, we should start paying attention again now, shouldn't we? Absolutely. I mean, what's just happened in the past week is the most important turning point of the war since Ukraine defeated Russia back in April from achieving their goal of doing a regime, you know, decapitation operation in like the Battle of Kyiv. This is pretty big. And as that ground was being taken back, the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, issued a really strongly worded Facebook post saying, did you really not understand anything? Did you not understand who we are? Yeah. He said, don't you understand? We, we've said it since day one. There is there's only victory. I mean, he speaks for the Ukrainians. I, and he said, actually, in the beginning, like, I, I, whatever happens, it'll be the Ukrainian people that decide mm-hmm. This offensive was the first time that Ukraine has conducted a large-scale offensive, but with outmeasured, overwhelming results. I mean, it's just amazing. They've taken more ground in just a couple days, last few days, than Russia has managed to take with all its military in the since April when it retreated from Kyiv and other areas. Mm, according to President Zelensky, The troops have retaken more than 6,000 square kilometres. I think that's still to be verified, but it's a huge amount of of ground. Yeah, it's hard to keep track at this point. Mm. It's really hard to keep track, yeah. Can you explain how and where this unfolded? Sure. So over the past few weeks, if you've been watching, um, the Ukrainians have been televising, you're basically publicly broadcasting their major operation to liberate the southern city of Kherson. It's one of the first cities taken by Russia. It's in the south. It's an important city. But they've been not only saying they're, they were headed to liberate it, but they've also been for weeks and weeks setting the conditions, blowing all the bridges, um, hitting Russian ammunition supplies, hitting as far into Crimea. For weeks, not only saying, but putting into position the steps to take this city in the south. Uh, and they were advancing. The Russians had to respond because if they didn't respond, then 20,000 Russians were going to get encircled, which they are today, Mm. um, and lose. So Russia made this decision to reposition forces out of the east where the majority of their forces were uh, in the Donbass region and and start maneuvering them south. And then they really just surprised everybody. And, And this was not, nobody was reporting even the possibility, but Ukraine mounted the main operation, the main offensive in the northeast around the city of Kharkiv, mm. a massive tank, mechanized, armored offensive onto what the Russians had left in position, which was a very, very weak force. And I think it actually, one, it surprised Russia for sure, that it surprised you know, anybody who wasn't in the know that because they had done so well the operational security and it succeeded. And I think he succeeded far greater than even the Ukrainians had imagined. Mm. And the Russians, as you mentioned, were taken by surprise. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, notes it was a methodically planned 
operation and executed so well. It sounds pretty sophisticated. You know, this is a pivotal moment. Um, more than six months into Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, as your counteroffensive is now underway and proving effective. So what do we know about what was going on behind the scenes to pull this off? Yeah, I mean, weeks of uh, positioning uh, training, so live fire training, positioning uh, Ukrainian forces in hidden positions, getting ready to advance. But from the really the national general staff level down to the individual soldiers preparing for this historic operation, that's what had to have happened in order to pull this off like this and to continue it beyond the first couple of days. It's it's still going on as we talk. Mm. Yeah, their their ability to maneuver faster than the Russians, which has been legitimate. I mean, it probably takes weeks for the Russians to reposition forces from the east to the south area. What the Ukrainians just did was maneuver a much larger force over days and rapidly keep it going. Mm. From your experience in the field, I mean, how hard would that have been to execute, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, just from my own experiences in, in combat, I mean, these are operations that take months of planning, uh, months of setting the in the conditions. But to do this, you know, we did it from like, you know, Operation Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom, you know, in full visibility of the world, like in a, in a major operating base, like we're coming, like nobody can deny it. Mm. Um, this was done beautifully with some hidden capabilities. And in the rush to leave, the Russians left behind a huge amount of weaponry. So if you remember back when uh, Russia withdrew all its forces in the north around Kiev and, and Sumy and Cherniv and all these other cities, they did a deliberate withdrawal. And I actually got the chance recently to go because I was studying the Battle of Kiev. I went to Ukraine and I'm actually very impressive as I went and walked that ground, uh, what they, how they withdrew with artillery and they took everything with them. And like, it was like, of course you saw anything that was burning and destroyed was left in place, but it was all gone. In this situation that they, they seem to have been caught by such surprise that they didn't even, tr they just ran. They didn't withdraw. So withdrawal is a military term. Mm. They literally in chaos ran and left their vehicles, their tanks, their, their artillery, the artillery round depots all in position. I mean, overnight, they just became the greatest provider of military aid to Ukraine to date. And that's pretty crazy. Mm, incredible. I mean, you've mentioned you've, you've been to Ukraine. The scenes in these liberated towns have been quite incredible. <laughs> but there are also, I can see now, accounts emerging of torture and civilian killings. Yes, unfortunately. Mm. I mean, every day we, and this is what I learned when I went to Ukraine. And, and you know, I, I had heard about Bucha, and actually, Bucha was one of the first places I went. But it was anywhere I went, where anywhere Russians had stopped, they raped, pillaged, mm. uh, stole, destroyed anything and everything that they could. So now the 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 horrors imposed on all these people who have been occupied is being discovered, right? So who knows the how bad it will be, the mass graves and the torture facilities. And, but it, it's unfortunate that anywhere Russia goes, this is what they do. Mm, really mixed feelings, I'm sure, there for the people in those cities that have been liberated. What comes next, John? Do you think the Ukrainians can keep going, keep this push underway? I know that one thing they're worried about is the winter, the snow yeah. returning. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I've been, I'm cautious as I, I can be. Mm. Um, what we're seeing right now is that we don't know where, where the Ukrainians will stop because the Russians are falling, literally abandoning so much that we can't keep track of how much land has been liberated because the, the Ukrainians aren't facing resistance in some places and they're just advancing, advancing, or there's just a little pocket left that they have to take out. The danger is that Ukraine goes too fast, too far, and it extends itself too much to where it's vulnerable. So it's going to be very careful in how it does that. But between, you know, now and over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, we also have to watch and see what Russia is going to do to respond. Mm. But yes, winter's coming, but I don't think that this is just going to go into a stalemate, right? Through the winter. Ukraine's going to keep pushing. 
Mm. So Vladimir Putin's special military operation, as he calls it, isn't going so well for him. We can see now also, can't we, that there's some people in Russia beginning for the first time to speak out against him, even on state TV. So he's under pressure. Yeah, absolutely. In Moscow Times, in these massive telegram forums, which the, the Russians use a lot, like like pro-Russian spokespersonnel saying that they're losing, uh, that the Ukrainian, maybe we should recognize the Ukrainian people, to where you have generals, which is just mind-blowing, a Russian general on state TV saying, Putin, you messed up, you've lost. The biggest flaw in our military and political situation is that we are in total geopolitical solitude. And the whole world is against us, even if we don't want to admit it. And we need a way out of this situation. So what will Putin's next move be, do you think? He's already shown that he's fine with tens of thousands of Russian soldiers dying. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think he'll escalate as in... You know, the fear that some people might have about nuclear, biological, chemical. Mm -hmm. I just, I personally don't think that he'll, even in defeat, would go there because of the fact that he, his ultimate goal is to stay in power, um, survival of his regime and survival of the Russian state. The, the real question is now, if the, the, the Russian military, which I believe it will be, is completely defeated in Ukraine, um, what's his response going to be this historic military defeat? So it sounds like you're pretty sure now Ukraine is going to win this. I mean, I've been sure for months, mm. uh, understanding the Ukrainian people. And this isn't just about comparing the Ukrainian military to the Russian military. This is comparing the entire 40 plus million Ukrainians to the Russian military in Ukraine. You know, there's lots of fighting to be done. I don't think this, is, this war is going to go on for years. I think it'll be months. But they're going to win. John Spencer is an expert in urban warfare and a retired US Army major. If you want to hear what life in Moscow has been like since the start of the war, that's in your feed from Tuesday. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sydney Peed, Sam Dunn and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free. 